Wherever this guy seems to go, women seem to drop dead. And that's not very nice. Hello, true crimers. This is the case of Lowell Amos. Viewer discretion is advised. Real quick before we get started, please make sure if you're new to the channel, hello, I'm Mike, by the way, I tell true crime stories, so please subscribe. I tell one every Monday, every Wednesday, every Friday, three videos every single week here on YouTube. Also follow me over on TikTok where I tell short form true crime stories pretty much every single day. The link to that and all that information is listed in the link tree in the description of this video below. As well as my link to my Instagram, to my Facebook. I also have a Discord server. If you want to join it, by all means do so. Roxy's trying to get out of my room, hence the scratching. But uh, if you do join the Discord, be over the age of 18 or else you're going to be kicked out of there. I also sell merch, also linked below. We ship all over the world. And lastly, if there's a case you want me to cover, just email me. My email is listed below in the description as well, or it's Mikey at truecrimer.com. Just email me the name of the individual, where it happened, when it happened, and I'll add it to my list. I can't tell you when I'll cover it because I pick my cases at random and I have 5,200 plus names on there, so it may be a while. But let's get into today's case. Lowell Edwin Amos, which is the oldest name I have ever heard, was born on January 4th, 1943 in Indiana. Many, many, many years later, he would meet a woman named Roberta Wagner. And Roberta, she was born on February 26, 1957, also in Indiana. Uh, she had been married to a man named Ricky Mowry, which I think she married, I think, in 1975, 1976 or so. They were married for quite some time, but when she later on met Lowell, I guess she fell in love with him. He was this attractive guy to her. She would end up divorcing Ricky and would then marry um, Lowell in 1993. Uh, much to the uh, dismay of her family, her family wasn't really all that head over heels over Lowell. Um, they felt he was just a bit off. He was wrong for her, but she loved him. On December 9th, 1994, Lowell and Roberta were staying in Detroit, Michigan, and they were at the Athenium Suite Hotel there in Detroit. They were there because the company that Lowell worked for was having this big old Christmas party there. Lowell worked for a consulting firm, which was called Preferred Personnel, and this was not just your normal like work gathering. They were having their work function, but there was also a lot of alcohol and there was also drugs. Uh, specifically, I think cocaine and heroin. Now, Lowell and Roberta were seen mingling in the crowd at the party in the lobby or the, I guess, conference room or wherever of this hotel. They left the party around 4, maybe 4.30 a.m. and they would go up to another room. There was a smaller party going on upstairs in one of the uh, colleagues' rooms. And this was a more intimate party, they said, and again, more alcohol and... This is where most of the drug use was happening, was in this little party. At approximately 8.30 a.m. the following morning, so this is now on December 10th, 1994, Lowell contacts his uh, co-worker named Norbert, and he asks Norbert to come to his hotel room because they were both they were all staying at the hotel. Lowell told Norbert when he got to the room, Roberta's dead. Uh, it was just sort of an abrupt, like, hey, she died. And... He gave him, Lowell gave Norbert this like sports jacket that he, I guess, was wearing. And I guess a couple other small things and say, hey, can you get rid of these? Kind of strange. And then at about 10 o'clock in the morning, I guess Lowell would contact the front desk to say, hey, my wife died in the hotel room last night. So police were called and they go up to the room. And sure enough, Roberta... Amos is now is just lying on the bed. She's deceased. They don't see any signs of foul play in the room. They don't see any signs of foul play on her. There's no gunshot wounds. There's no stab wounds. There's no injection wounds. There's no bruising. There's no indication she was hit, struck, anything. She appears to be, and in terms of like the way she looked, 
in normal condition, but she was dead. But at the autopsy, when they had a closer look, they did find, I guess, an abrasion on her forehead and two like very minor, not really, you can't really tell, but they were like little bruises, but nothing else. The, none of those things indicated why she died. So they ran a toxicology test on her because then that's the next thing. Like, did she die of something? And she did. She died of cocaine poisoning. She had an absolutely astronomical amount of cocaine in her body. Police interview Lowell, like, okay, were you guys doing cocaine? And he at that point admits, yes. Back in the room, we were doing it. But Roberta, she had a sinus issue, so she could not snort it. So she took it in a different way. She would, I guess he said, that she took the cocaine vaginally. I did not know that was a thing you could do. But I'm also not a drug user, so maybe that's why I didn't know that. But she apparently, he said, put it into her vagina and that's how she ingested it. He then says they went to bed that night. She was fine and when he woke up, she was dead and he, you know, she was cold to the touch. He then tells police, I got rid of the drugs before you guys got here because, you know, drugs. The level of cocaine in her body was, I guess at a number, uh, the level was 3.7, which they said was about 15 times more than the average level of a cocaine overdose that you would ever see. So not only did she take too much, she took way, way, way more than too much. Somehow they were also able to tell during the autopsy that Roberta was not the one to put the cocaine into her body. They said it was somebody else who did it. They're, they swabbed her mouth, they, they swabbed her rectum, um, all of the ways, other ways they can get into her body. There was no traces of cocaine. They, they thoroughly looked for any needle or injection marks. They found none. When they swabbed her her vagina, that's how they traced levels of cocaine. So not only do they interview the coworker Norbert, but they interviewed Norbert's girlfriend, Darcy. And Darcy was also invited to the Amos's room that morning after Roberta had died. And she said, she was the one who told police that Lowell gave Norbert a sports jacket, a large syringe with no needle, and a hotel washcloth that she said smelled awful. But they didn't have like concrete evidence at that point to say, okay, he, you know, Lowell purposefully put cocaine, this much cocaine into Roberta's body and purposefully killed her. They asked him, why did you, why did you want to have this syringe, the cocaine and the sports jacket all out of the room before we got there. Like, what was the point of that? Um, and he said that, well, he didn't want them to catch him with any signs of cocaine. I guess maybe he didn't realize they would be able to detect cocaine in her body. Maybe they didn't. he didn't realize they would find traces of cocaine, you know, vaginally on her. So they start looking into Lowell's past and this isn't his first wife. This isn't his second wife. This is his third wife. And okay, well, let's talk to the other two wives to see if they can give any insight. Well, they can't do that. Why? Because they're both dead. Lowell's first wife was 36 year old Sandra. And in 1979, they were living in Anderson, Indiana. And I guess this was during a time when Lowell was attempting to run for a political office as a Republican there in the town of Anderson and you know, so he was more in the public eye at that point. He did not end up winning. Well, one night in 1979, he called police because his wife, Sandra, was dead inside of their home. She had, um, I, she had an injury to her head and he explained that she fell in the bathroom and hit her head on the counter. When they uh, did the autopsy on Sandra, uh, they had a hard time actually distinguishing how she actually died though. She had high levels of a sleeping aid and high levels of alcohol in her body as well, indicating she may have taken too much of both things. Maybe that led to her falling in the bathroom. Lowell Amos, pretty much immediately collected a $350,000 life insurance policy after she died. Basically, right towards the end of, of 
Sandra's life, while they were still married, Lowell began dating, secretly, another woman. Her name was Carolyn Lawrence. And then after Sandra died, sometime like a few or so months later, he married Carolyn. Lowell tried to take out a life insurance policy on Carolyn. Carolyn found out. Carolyn said, um, I'm not going to be with you unless you cancel this life insurance policy. Probably, she was probably thinking like, what are you up to? He refused to do it, but then she broke up with him. When that happened, Lowell Amos would move in with his mom, Mary Tolls. Mary at the time was 77 years old. Yeah, unfortunately, by the way, I don't have photos of Mary. I don't have photos of Carolyn or Sandra. These, they're very difficult to find photos of, unfortunately. And I don't really know much about any of their backstories. But a few weeks after Lowell moved back in with his mom, his mom, Mary, dies. Lowell inherited $1 million after her death. All very convenient. How did Mary die? Well, because she was 77 years old, they didn't perform an autopsy on her because she had no exterior wounds or injuries to her body. They just said she died of natural causes. She's 77. It's life. But it was so sudden. Like, it just happened out of nowhere without any pre-existing issues. Like, no heart issues, nothing like that. She just dropped dead. And this is conveniently just a couple of weeks after Lowell moved back in. And then he gets a million dollars out of it. So then Lowell manages to weasel his way back into Carolyn's life. And he moves back in with Carolyn. Well, in 1989, he calls 911 and says, Carolyn, my ex-wife or wife, I'm not sure at that point what they were, but he says, she's dead. What he tells them is that Carolyn electrocuted herself with her hairdryer thing, and she was at the bathroom sink, and somehow she electrocuted herself with this. I don't know how he would know that, but that's what he told them. The autopsy would show that there was high amounts of Valium in her system and high amounts of alcohol, very similar to Sandra. Um, and and later, later down the road, very similar to Roberta. High levels of drugs or prescriptions or alcohol in all of their bodies. The, the interesting thing is that there, there was no exterior injuries, uh, exterior, external injuries to Carolyn and they, they found the cord of the, the hairdryer and it was like, I guess it was cut and it wasn't even working. And so they weren't sure how she would have electrocuted herself if the cord was cut and damaged where it couldn't even do anything. They search the bathroom, they don't find anything else. There's no blood, there's no anything. Uh, no indications of foul play. And what does Lowell get out of this? $800,000 from the life insurance policy that he had taken out on her that she said, hey, we're breaking up if you don't cancel this. Well, he didn't cancel it and then she dies. So police are investigating the death of Roberta Amos and they are they found out all of this information about two previous dead wives and a dead mother where he collected money after all of their deaths. All of them died with high levels of alcohol or drugs or prescription drugs in their bodies. All of their autopsies would all have undetermined deaths, meaning they, uh, with the exception of his mom, because they didn't even do an autopsy on her, but the other, the two wives, they, they just said that's undetermined. We couldn't, they couldn't figure out if it was accidental suicide or if it was homicide. They just couldn't tell. And it's always been labeled that way. But police now strongly suspected that there is a pretty terrifying pattern here. Lowell marries a woman, takes out a life insurance policy, then she dies. He then collects money, he moves on to the next person. One of those people decided, I'm kind of on to you. You took out a life insurance policy out on me. She kicks him out. He moves in with his mom. She dies. He collects a million dollars from her death. There, it's pretty obvious what's going on here. No one is that unlucky. And when it came to Roberta, he said, listen, she took too much cocaine, obviously, and then she died in her sleep. That's all it was. It was an accidental death. And that's what he kept saying over and over again. They found some evidence, however, uh, by interviewing people that Roberta was starting to become very unhappy in this marriage and she was debating leaving Lowell. Roberta had actually bought a new house for herself. 
So there was clearly a plan in motion for her to leave him. But in this instance, there was no life insurance policy on Roberta. So he didn't collect any money from her. So they had to think like, well, why else would he kill her? Well, he found out she was trying to leave, that she was unhappy. And by many people in Lowell's life, he has never been someone to take rejection easily. He gets very offended by it. He doesn't like when someone tries to leave him. And that's probably what he, why he did what he did. So what they would end up determining was that he somehow incapacitated Roberta. They don't exactly know how, but what he did is he took a that syringe that didn't have a needle. He took a high amount of cocaine. He put it into a glass, filled that wine glass with water, dissolved it, mixed it around, filled the syringe up with that water cocaine mix. And then as Roberta was unconscious, passed out, whatever he did to her, he then pumped it into her through her vaginally. He may have done this more than once. He may have taken more than one needleful. And this was like a thick needle too. But then when they had taken um, her body out of the hotel room initially, they found on the pillowcase, there was like lipstick, like almost like pressed onto the pillowcase and the sheets. And there was also, I guess they said soiled, they were soiled in some way. And what they think is that Roberta probably started to have some kind of reaction, seizure, if you will, to all of that cocaine suddenly going thrust into her body. And that Lowell didn't know what to do, so he flipped her and pressed her head into the pillow, which is why her lips, her lipstick was smeared onto the pillow. And then he suffocated her until she died. So given the history of the three previous women who died in his life, now they have Roberta. They know he collected a whole bunch of money from the previous women. And the fact that Roberta just suddenly drops dead with a cocaine poisoning, which is not very common. And this is all conveniently after she is planning to leave him. They have enough to arrest him and charge him with Roberta's murder. So on October 24th, 1996, he goes to trial. The jury finds him guilty. Um, the prosecution laid it out that he deliberately poisoned her with cocaine because she was trying to leave him. They were actually able to introduce evidence in, in this trial about the previous three women in his life who died, the two wives and his mom. They could not prove, however, they couldn't say for certain that he actually killed them. They just introduced it as like, almost like hearsay evidence or here's what's happened before in his life. We can't say he killed them, but what are the odds? The coincidences are insane. So he was convicted and sentenced to life in prison without the possibility of parole. He was never charged with connections to the two previous wives and his mom's death. They never had the evidence to support it. They didn't have his mom's body anymore, essentially, because she was buried and they never did an autopsy on her. And there was really no point at that, at that point because he was already gonna be serving the rest of his life in prison and he's never gonna get out. On January 5th, 2022, when he is 79 years old, Lowell Edwin Amos dies of natural causes rotting in a prison cell. And quite honestly, that's the fate that Lowell Amos deserved. It's not the fate that Roberta Amos deserved. She wanted to get out. She Maybe she found out about the previous wives and his mother. Maybe she had her own suspicions. Maybe she got scared. Maybe that's why she bought a house and was trying to move on. You know, there's no, there was no evidence of like domestic abuse, anything like that. She may have just uncovered some stuff and was quietly trying to get away, but he found out and he couldn't take it. And so he killed her and Roberta didn't deserve that. I don't know much about Roberta, unfortunately. There isn't a whole lot of backstory on her, but she died far too young. She was only, I think 37, maybe 38 years old. She had, a lot of life left in her. That's my age, that's how old I am right now. And it's just sad that she wasn't given that opportunity simply because one man couldn't handle her trying to leave him. But Roberta Amos, Roberta Wagner, let's call her that, she was thankfully given the justice she rightfully deserved.
But that is it for this case. True crime, Maroonie Dooney, Dingleberry Dongs. Gross, right? That was a gross thing for me to say, Dingleberry Dongs. You'll catch it. You'll, you'll like it eventually, I promise. Anyway, that's it for this video. So please subscribe. Again, if you're into true crime and you're a bunch of kook kook jew wack doos like the rest of us. And also follow me over on TikTok, Instagram, Facebook, all of that link below. Yada, 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 yada. But that's all. That's all, folk. Nope, can't say that's probably trademarked. Yabba dabba, yabba dabba do. Nope, can't do that. Yabba. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Ha <laughs> Goodbye. Guy tried something new. That was terrifying, wasn't it? Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know what that was. I hope that doesn't scar your brains. Um, give me nightmares, that kind of thing. I apologize if it does. I'll work on something. I'll try to. I'll try to figure out a, a goodbye. But that was not it. A yak yak yak. Whatever that was. That was not it. That was. That was a horror story. It is the month of Halloween, however. So you're welcome for spooking you. What am I doing? What am I doing? I don't even know. If you're new here, I don't know how to say goodbye. It's a simple word. Goodbye. I just said it right there. But I don't know how to say it. Goodbye. I just said it. You know what I mean? I don't know how to. S you see, the word goodbye started in the, the ox. The, listen, the dictionary describes goodbye 